Hello gorgeous peeps, this is Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be setting up and testing out and reviewing the Google Nest Wi-Fi. So Google fans might remember a couple of years back we had the Google Wi-Fi. This is the successor to that, the Nest Wi-Fi, because of course all of Google's smart home kit now comes under the Nest brand. Like the last version, the Nest Wi-Fi is of course a mesh Wi-Fi system. You can just buy the router by itself and it'll work perfectly well. This is the combined pack so you get the router and you get the point as well, which you just stick somewhere else in your house where you've got a bit of a Wi-Fi black spot and that just helps to boost your connectivity. The Nest Wi-Fi router by itself will cost you 149 quid here in the UK. That gives you 2,200 square foot of coverage. If you want to buy this pack here, the router and the point that will boost your coverage up to 3,800 square foot and that costs you 239 quid. And if you do buy the router and then decide later on that you do want the point, you can buy one of those separately for 129 quid. So it's a very similar setup to the original Google Wi-Fi as you can see there, but you do now have full built-in Google Assistant support which we'll be testing out in full and the general technology has been improved in a number of key areas. So let's have a gander at what you actually get in the box. That's on there pretty damn tight. Oh, there we go. So you've got, of course, the Nest router and the Nest Point. They do look very similar, as you can see there. Plain, white, curvy affairs. Very nice indeed. They should blend into any kind of home decor. You can't tell them apart quite easily, though, because the Nest Point does have these four Farfield mics up top and a bit of speaker grill action down below as well. That's because it's got the built-in Google Assistant support, something that you don't get in the actual router itself. And yep, there you have the actual power cables. As you can see, the uh, the actual plugs look very much like the, uh, the router and the point themselves, very nice. And you've also got a very white ethernet cable to get it all set up. And that's it for the box, very straightforward stuff. So as I mentioned before, very simple, straightforward design for both the router and the point. Absolutely shouldn't clash with any of your home furnishings, so you can stick them proudly on display uh, without any stress about that. And of course, you shouldn't bury them away or anything because that will dampen your coverage. And if you actually give a damn about the environment, the great news is that the Google Nest Mini is now made from 40% recycled content, so Captain Planet would definitely be giving you a thumbs up for that one. There is actually a teeny weeny little Google logo up top, which is actually very hard to say. I almost completely missed that, in fact. And if you check out the connections down below, it's a very simple, straightforward affair. Again, you've basically got your power connector in the middle and then dual Ethernet ports as well. One for getting connected to the internet and another one to hook up to a smart home gadget such as a TV streamer or a computer, something like that that needs really fast internet access. Obviously quite limited compared with a lot of rivals. And the point is even more basic. You've only got the power connector there down below. That's it. No Ethernet ports or anything like that. And you do have a mic mute button on the back here as well because, of course, you've got those four Farfield mics built into the top, so if you just want to mute the Google Assistant, make sure she doesn't pick up on any of the uh, random shenanigans you're seeing. Just give that a little flick, job done. So getting the Nest router all set up should hopefully touch wood be nice and straightforward. So I've plugged it in, as you can see, we've already got a little glowing light down below just to show that it is actually alive and kicking. Now what I'm gonna do is just pull out the internet ethernet cable from my old router and then shove it on into the Nest router. And then to get the Nest router all set up, what you'll need to do is dive on into the Google Home app and then go to Add. As you can see there, the Nest Wi-Fi router has popped up, so let's just give that a tick. You'll see that down here on the base of the Nest router, you've got a QR code, so all you need to do is just basically hold your phone up to that, make sure it's scanned. That looks a bit blurry to me, but it seems to have picked it up. And the rest of the setup is blissfully just as simple and straightforward. All you've got to do is enter your ISP account name and password, and boom, you're connected to the internet. Now, it is worth pointing out that the Nest Wi-Fi does not support the new fresh version Wi-Fi 6. When we asked Google about this, they basically said there aren't many supported devices out there for Wi-Fi 6 right now. In fact, as far as the smartphones go, it's basically the new iPhones, that's pretty much it. Even the new Pixels don't support it. And so therefore, Google decided to cut costs and not add that support. But of course, in 2020, it will become more widespread and I wouldn't be surprised to see a new Wi-Fi 6 version of the Nest Wi-Fi released then. And of course, that lack of Ethernet ports on the back of the Google Nest Wi-Fi is also an issue if you have more than one bridge or base station that you need to set up in order to connect your various smart home gadgetry. In that instance, you'll have to use an Ethernet switch, which of course then ruins that whole clean and fresh setup design. Now, the Nest Wi-Fi supports download speeds of up to, theoretically, 2.2 gigabytes per second. Of course, your actual speeds will depend on all kinds of stuff, primarily your ISP and how good your connection is there. Mine's not particularly great. You can actually check by going into the Wi-Fi section here on the Google Home app. And then if you just scroll down, you'll see there's a network section here. You can run a speed test, and that'll just tell you the exact download and upload speeds that you can expect via the Google Nest Wi-Fi. 
And from within those Wi-Fi settings, you can check the general network health as well. Make sure that the mesh setup is working absolutely fine. The point is well connected to the actual router itself and troubleshoot any general issues. Now, the actual Nest router, you get a 4x4 radio antenna setup. Now, that's an upgrade of the old 2x2 setup found in the older Google Wi-Fi, although the point itself does have a standard 2x2 setup. But in combination, you can connect hundreds, literally hundreds of smart home gadgets to your network. In fact, you can actually check the exact number of devices that are connected to your Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi network at any given time from within that home app. You can also see exactly what kind of strain they are putting on your Wi-Fi as well. Spot any offenders that are really bogging you down and slowing everything else. And from within that uh, menu as well, you can also set a priority device, which is particularly handy if you're going to be, for instance, gaming online. You want to make sure that device gets the lion's share of the bandwidth. Unfortunately, it's kind of limited. You can only set it for a duration of one hour, two hours, or four hours. You can't set it for longer than that, any kind of custom effort, uh, but it's pretty standard anyway, to be honest. Fortunately, so far, I haven't actually had to to use that feature beyond just sort of testing it to make sure it works. I've had absolutely no problem gaming online upstairs while the family's been watching a nice bit of 4K Netflix downstairs. The connection's been superb throughout the house, even when I've disconnected the point and just used the router. Standard three bedroom house, average size for London. Um, so yeah, absolutely no troubles there. And it's also really good to see Google taking parental controls very seriously in the latest versions of Android and also with uh, smart home gadgets such as the Nest Wi-Fi. And right here, you've got the family Wi-Fi feature, which you can set up again via the Google Home app. And this just allows you to group together a whole bunch of devices that your kids use and then set restrictions on them. So for instance, make sure they can't access the internet at 3 a.m. so they're not plunging down that YouTube rabbit hole when they should be getting a good night's kip. And as well as time restrictions, you can also block access to adult content for an extra bit of peace of mind. So as you can see there, you can actually pause internet access in real time if they're uh, being particularly troublesome. And then just unpause again with a quick tap. And then of course, the most handy feature is the ability to set up a schedule for the Wi-Fi. As you can see there, you can just set a basic schedule a start time and an end time every day or you can set it for individual nights as well which is very very helpful and a pretty standard feature for wi-fi routers these days is the ability to set up a guest network so anyone visiting your homestead has got access to the internet but not to all of your smart home gadgets you can set the name of the guest network set up a fresh password for it make it whatever you want obviously it doesn't have to be particularly secure as it's only going to have access to the internet and then say exactly which devices they will actually be able to play around with and also, I absolutely love the idea of having the Google Assistant built into the Nest Point as well. So basically, it's a two-in-one device. It's a mesh point as well as a Nest Mini. Thankfully, it's very clear and obvious when the Google Assistant is listening in because that bottom section will glow, which looks rather spectacular at nighttime as well. So, hey, Google. As you can see there, starts to flash. And as I mentioned before, at any time, if you want to mute the Assistant. The mic's off. You will get uh, told quite clearly that the mic is off and as you can see there you get a nice orange glow down below which again looks very funky at night time and just like the new google nest mini as well which i've fully reviewed go check that out if you haven't seen that already those far field mics do a great job of picking up your instructions your uh, requests even in a very noisy environment so let's just unmute the tv i'll try to ask him what the weather is like the perfect hey google the what's the weather like today So as you can see, quite clearly picked up my instructions. Didn't have to raise my voice at all or anything like that, so that was great. And the speaker's pretty decent as well, as far as a tiny little dinky speaker, especially one built into an actual mesh point. It does the job absolutely fine. Again, could clearly hear over the noise of the uh, the TV. If you're going to be blasting music or something like that, I'd suggest just connecting up to a dedicated smart home speaker and doing it that way instead. Uh, but yeah, for everything else, for your simple Google Assistant needs, does the job. It is essentially the exact same speaker setup as you'll find in that new Google Nest Mini. So say go check out that review if you want to know more about the quality of the speakers, the sound, and the various Google Assistant functionality. And that, in a nutshell, is the new Nest Wi-Fi mesh system. So as you can see, pretty easy setup, nice clean finish. The lack of Ethernet ports is a bit of an issue, and of course, it doesn't support the latest Wi-Fi. 6 which is a bit of a shame but it's pretty affordable for a mesh system the fact you can add extra points is great and the google assistant functionality built in there is a really smart addition too so are you tempted by the nest wi-fi it's available right now as i say from the likes of the google store and various other uk retailers as well if you've actually set it up yourself it'd be great to hear your thoughts down below as well how your experiences and everything i'm going to keep on testing it as well just to make sure that there are no funny little quirks or bugs that rise up after sort of a week or two of use uh, but please do poke subscribe and ding that notification bell for more on the latest and greatest tech and have yourselves a fine week people love you